Good evening, I'm Nalini Singh. Thank you to all our viewers for joining us. Also, thank you for those who are joining us via Facebook live stream. So this week, we will be looking at the move forward. We'll be looking at the impact of this on our nation and our people. I am Juan Edgel Jr. and we have much to discuss tonight given the current state of affairs in our country. So to get, a, to write, to get into our discussion this evening, we're going to look at uh, a very pertinent issue and this is GCOM and what is currently happening at uh, the Ghana Elections Commission in our country. So recently we saw that there have been a lot of confusion with GCOM. GCOM created a lot of confusion yes. over the past few yeah. days we've been seeing about what was required of eligible voters once the claims and objections period would have commenced. And this is a release, we have the release with us uh, that the GCOM would have released uh, yeah, with regards statement. to this, yes. So a release from the GCOM Secretariat, which was signed by the PRO, uh, insisted that all eligible voters had to visit the GCOM registration in their office. And the release said, and I quote, during this exercise, every person whose name appears on the preliminary list of electors must visit the registration office in their respective area with their national identification card to verify their registration record in order to be included in the official list of electors. So this, this press release was actually released on the 27th of September. Yes. And Last week. it's interesting that we, we just quoted is not constitutional. So yes. strong objections by the opposition nominated GCOM commissioners saw this position being reversed, whereas yes. Madam Chairperson of the commission, yes. who is the neutral person on the commission, yes. is reversing it. Yes, she, uh, she did do an order reversing it yes. uh, completely. What we should point out is the PRO, uh, who is the public relations officer, Yolanda Ward, is a part of the election secretariat, which is yes. very different from the commission. The commission comprises of three opposition nominated commissioners, three, op three government nominated commissioners, and a uh, neutral person, the neutral person we know had this big case yes. about where the CCJ yes. ruled that it must be from the list provided by the, the opposition, opposition leader yes. to the president. They can consult to make sure it's a suiting, ca fitting yes. candidate, fit and proper, yes. as he likes <laughs> to say. Uh, and I think the case was very important that yeah. it was fought in, in, the, in, the, in the courts because... Went all the way to the CCJ. Imagine what would have been occurring right now at GCOM. So it is very important <laughs> that we would have gone through this process to yeah. ensure that the courts uh, corrected what should, what should not have even reached uh, the yeah. CCJ in the first place. Because there's it's a lot of people that are on the PLE right now, yes. like um, my cousin Omendra and Sister Nutana. Yes. Both of them have been very worried, messaging, calling, being like, what is GCOM doing? They've yes. actually reached out to GCOM to find out. People I know yes. have been sending emails out to GCOM to know, am I still on the PLE and so on. And we're waiting to see what they say to these people too. Well, well, obviously. And in her judgment, I need to remi I can remind our viewers, yeah. in, her, in her judgment, Chief Justice Roxon Jord, uh, she made an order that would make it this unconstitutional. Is this is a judgment referring to the house-to-house -house registration. Yes, correct. Yes. Which would have made it unconstitutional to remove persons from the voters list um, that, that they are dead or all, otherwise disqualified. It's basically talking about residency not yeah. being not a requirement. Being there, exactly. Also, that the only way that you can be removed from the list would be if you are if you're deceased. If yes. <laughs> so and, and this and this uh, comes in accordance with articles uh, 159 uh, paragraphs two, three, and four of our constitution. Yeah, I think two carries the reasons you need to be off. So yes. So basically, some have have actually said that uh, the new uh, by this rogue uh, secretary, the new thing that they were trying to do is to get person is a new form of house house registration. Well, it again. does seem like that because it's instead of you they're coming to your house, you have to go to them. Yes. So it is similar to the house. So house we just want to inform our viewers that uh, this has been reversed. Uh, mm -hmm. We feel as if the secretariat was not acting. Uh, according to the Constitution, and of course, we do have to make the distinction that the Commission is, <laughs> is very different. Is, is very different to the Secretariat at this when uh, the point in time. Was com acting, some trying to impose something that's unconstitutional, since yes. there should be no requirement to, to go in and verify. Oh, my name's there. Yes. I mean, it's on you to check see if your name is on the PLE. We'll come to that to explain to you the importance of why you need to check it and make sure you're registered yes. and so, so forth. So the, the, the point is what the con what the secretary did was unconstitutional and, and there was no requirement, kind of. <laughs> there is no requirement for you to go to the office uh, to, to, to get to get to be registered because if you would have voted yeah. in previous elections, you are on the list and you should be allowed to vote. 
Yeah. Right? And we will get to the claims and objections well, period. What happens for this list? So let's we claims and objections actually started yesterday on Tuesday, October the first. Yes. Um, so what was, uh, what's going to happen during this period is they pulled up from the NRR a list of all eligible voters from this, as in cutoff date being December 31st of this yes. year. So what we need to do, find, what we need to realize is interesting about this time is it was 35 days is what claims and objection is yes. constitutionally bound to be. But the order on September 26th had 49 days. And when wow. it was, the position was now put out that it's 42 days, so it's ending. November 11th. Yeah, November 11th. Yeah, so what we want to talk about for claims and objections, and I want to go over with everyone, is... Yeah, we can go over a few things. Yeah. Yes, okay. So, so what the electors can do, right? Yes, so what, what, what can an elector do uh, during the claims and objections period? Um, you can be transferred from one division to another voting division. So let's make that yes. very clear to people. Yeah. What that really means is, let's say I used to live on 4th Avenue and I now move to 5th Avenue, I'm still in the same voting division. Yes. So therefore I do not need to change. But I used to live in Peshad and Gar, now I've moved to the East Coast. I do need yes. to change. And what I do need to take in with me to have this change done is an ID card or my valid passport. Excellent. Uh, valid it has to be, for your passport to work, it has to be valid of the day itself. Uh, no expired passports. It can be valid for many more years. But no expired excellent, passports. Excellent. <laughs> so uh, another thing that an elector can do if, uh, during this claims and objection period is that they can have a name change. Uh, for example, if a married woman wants to have her husband's name on her national identification card, she can do so but during yes. this time. So s most women would have already had their ID cards before they got married yeah. and they want a new so, one. So that if you got married between, um, I guess, like last year and <laughs> <laughs> this year, you can you can yeah, now Up go. to November 11th, so if I get married on the 10th and I take... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I take my You're deciding right. to take to take your husband's name. So what documents know, right? would what documents would you need to, to So you'll need your marriage certificate, yes. an original copy of your marriage certificate, because it will carry your husband name and an original okay. copy of your birth certificate or a valid passport or your ID card too, once again you could take it. So these are the documents you can use, something to identify you as a person, and then to say, hey, we're married. Another name change is, let's say, now you got divorced or you're widowed and you want to go back to your maiden okay. name. So. Yeah, some of the documents you'd need is your original absolute. So that's if uh, you're divorced. The yes, absolute this, is this for is, when the divorced, divorced woman has yeah. to go in. You, you'd also need your husband's death certificate. Yeah. Work that's with your husband's death certificate. And last but not least, your ID card Well, the well. ID card is needed in both scenarios. Yes. So the absolute is if you're divorced, you take the absolute that says, mm -hmm. hey, we're no longer together, and this ID card, and your husband's death certificate, if he happens to have passed away. Yes, okay. Uh, uh, and, and the last uh, scenario with the name change, uh, persons whose name has been changed otherwise. Well, sometimes what happens is when GCOM, mm -hmm. you go in, you didn't realize that you, your name was spelled wrong, okay. or like you were adopted or something, okay. then you can uh, So if they spell yeah. your name with two E's uh, Or drop the E's. E like okay. one usually does. Okay, so, <laughs> <laughs> so then you'd be able to, to have this name change, and what are some of the documents you need so to, to, to if do this. I'm going in because my name people spell it wrong all the time, yeah. I will need a deed poll in my ID card. But if I've been adopted, well, someone has been adopted when yeah. you, so you register at 14 and then you get adopted at 15, so your name obviously changed. So you'll take your adoption certificate in and your ID card because now you're 18 and you want to have your adopted yes, family's name. So. Yeah. That's so, another thing. So, so do. also, what you can do, and, and, and this might have been happening or, or is happening to a lot of Guyanese, we're replacing when you want to replace your ID. Yeah, because you, I mean, your ID card picture was yeah. taken when you were 14, and some of us don't look 14 anymore. No, some of us certainly don't. <laughs> I, know, I, I know I want to change my ID card picture because okay. it looks like a possession person. So. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> but hopefully, I'll do this. Some of the documents you'd need if you'd like to replace your ID um, you, first, what you need to do is to visit the nearest GCOM office and to collect a statutory form. Uh, this this form must be completed and signed by a commission of votes, uh, then return to the GCOM office for his or her photo to be taken and a new card, then a new card will be issued. Okay, what's and important the, to note though process. about the replacement of ID card, mm -hmm. based on your reasons, if it's damaged then they'll give you the form. The yeah. form is at the discretion of GCOM to give to you. Oh, really? Yeah. So like if I go in and say, well, I just don't look that pretty on my picture. Like okay. I'm much nicer now. Okay, so you need to <laughs> right. have a valid, yeah. a, a valid I mean, reason. they took that picture Sunday morning, 6 o'clock. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's not exactly. Okay, so under valid for valid reasons, you can have your your ID card replaced. Yes, for okay. valid reasons only. Let's be really valid reasons. Okay. You got a nose job done. Your nose <laughs> same nose anymore. <laughs> Okay, uh, w another uh, requirement here is the correction to particulars on ID and GCAM database, and this is including of your date of birth, occupation, or a photo retake. Okay, so let's go over these yes, one by one can. because yeah, sure. the way they're done. Okay, so if on GCOM's database, yeah. your birthday is listed wrong, so you're, you're born 1995. Okay. Yeah. So instead of 1995, actually, oh, I'm uh -huh. sorry, 1984, uh -huh. just assumed five. Uh, uh -huh. Anyways, so they have 1984. Okay. Because they just assumed you were a little bit older or something. Okay. So you need to take in for that because your ID card now has the wrong birth date. You'll need to take in with that your original birth certificate and be like, hey, you need to change my ID card to say what my actual birthday yes. is. Yeah. If you want your occupation on the GCOM database, if you ever look at the when you yes. guys check your name on the PLE, you'll see your name, yes. first, first I've name. I've seen that occupation. 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 Most people have a blank. Yeah, I I've think, seen that. Yeah, mine's blank because I was a student when I was registered, so I don't think they put student because they know that's going to change. Yes, so indeed. for the occupation to be added, you need a letter from the employer, your employer or a supporting document. So let's say you Excellent. are a private owner of a business. Yeah. They'll take in like your business registration or something okay. of the sort. So now that goes on to GCOM website. Most people don't really want it don't really mind if it's blank or not. Yes. Or, or let's say your occupation change. You were once a lawyer, and now you want to know you as a doctor. What a change yes. in career. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. And the photo retake, that is if, once again, now it's coming with the permission from GCOM. Yes. To do that, you just need to take in your ID card so they, can see, they can see that you literally do not look the same. You got your nose done, filled your lips and your cheeks and something else, yeah. or you were in a terrible accident, and I don't know. Something. Something's happening there. Yeah. Okay. Well, they cannot well, be recognized. An another thing that an electric can do, and if you're watching, um, this is a very important this one. This is very important. Very important. This is for new registrants. All persons who will be 18 years old by December 31, 2019. This is GCOM's qualifying date. So if someone attains the age of 18 years by December 31, they can be uh, placed on the list and registered to vote next year for to, vote to vote march next year, march 2nd 2020 yes. to vote at that election this yes. this the new registrants being able to vote at um, being able to be registered due with the claims and objections is what led to all the commotion with the yes, house the house indeed. people be kept saying Claims and yes. objections will cover these new registrants. Yes, and because you had that I, I, do rem I do remember Nalini. They were saying that it will disenfranchise yeah. young people from voting at the next they elections. They being the government. Yes, the government <laughs> was saying that the AP and new AFC, they were saying the people want to disenfranchise young yeah. people from voting. Yeah. They don't want them on the list. But it, it's absolutely crazy because now we can see persons who are 17 years old, and once they are going to attain the age of 18 by December 31, Yes. they're going to be able to be placed on the list. And all you and need to take to your nearest yeah. GCOM office is your original birth certificate or a valid passport. That will both carries your age and the fact that you're Guyanese and so on. Yes. And they will be able to register you right there. You will be able to vote in March. Yes, and the process is very simple. Very the claims simple. And this is why the claims and objections... Uh, you went to register during <laughs> yes, 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 I did. That was, that was many... A few years ago. That was, was the last election <laughs> I won. Let's not kid the people. A few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so an another uh, another requirement, I think, is the, the Guyanese by, if you're Guyanese by descent, this is what an elector can do. Once you're Guyanese by descent, this is a person born to a Guyanese parent. But they weren't born can, in Guyana. That's correct. So what happened? What can you do? What they need for this, this these people, is an original Guyana birth certificate or valid uh, passport from their parent, so their Ghana birth certificate needs yeah. to be from their parent, or the parents, the parents' Ghanese birth certificate and their foreign birth certificate. But the important thing with their foreign birth certificate is it needs to be translated to English and certified. So this is for so a lot how, of people from Venezuela. Yeah, how could we get that? You have done? to take it into the embassy of Venezuela, yeah. or like if it's that's if you're from Venezuela, but you have to go to a credible institution to get it certified translation, not just, oh, I know to speak Spanish, so hola, let me translate for mm -hmm. you, or Google so Translate. it needs to be translated. Yes, but it needs Excellent. to be by an official place. Excellent. And then you need your parent 
birth certificate with these two documents, you can then go forward and get registered and be placed on yes. the elector's list. So w once you're also, this is the next thing, as long as you're true naturalization, once you're married to a guy in case. Yes, but it's married for a certain amount of years too. Okay. It's like about five years, that's when you will get your naturalization certificate. So if you've already applied and you possess a naturalization certificate, mm -hmm. You can take the naturalization certificate and your foreign birth certificate in. And if you're married to a person, because you naturalize via marriage, you take the marriage certificate as well. But some people naturalize here just by mm -hmm. living here for so long. Yes, they don't necessarily marry again. Sometimes they come husband and wife pair. Yes. And they're both naturalized. Yes. We know people like this. That's true. So that's, true. that's what you need to take in and put yourself on the voters list and have a say in the government that will be taking your taxes and how they will spend your taxes. So also, once you're a Commonwealth citizen residing in Guyana. So Commonwealth citizens, yeah. it's a little bit different for them versus naturalizing, yeah. uh, is they need a valid passport showing one year of continuous residency in Guyana. And one just, year, just one just year? Just one year, like, okay. yeah. Because we are part of the Commonwealth and it's okay. part of our like plans with the Commonwealth is that we give them a right to say this because they are here for more than okay. a year, some of them, but it's just a year of continuous residency we need to see from you. Okay, so once you're from a Commonwealth country. But we need to be very clear Venezuela, Brazil, Haiti, all these countries where we've seen influx of, uh, yeah, so of migrants yeah. from, they're, those are not Commonwealth countries. Okay, indeed. So if you're from a Commonwealth country, you're not sure, you can do the research and then you'll, you'll be able to know if. You will, you can be qualified to vote to vote, to vote in the next election, you know, the next elections next yeah. year. But do ensure that you do the research. And and last but not least, remigrants with foreign passports. Okay, uh, so they can also get in so there. So if you're remigrating to Ghana yeah. and you don't have a Guyanese passport, your Guyanese ID card, yeah. you will have a Guyanese birth certificate because you were born here. So you yeah. will take that birth certificate and get yourself registered. Excellent. So let's just go over. Um, to notify everyone where to become offices at this yeah, point excellent. there's only if there's only You're the right. standard ones that we have so in region one there's a Mar mabura registration office port Kaituma registration office and morocco uh, registration office region two you have anna regina you have charity you have and then so that's all for region two and one excellent. what's going to happen is there going to be more temporary locations that popped up Region three, you have Perica, uh, Lagrange, and between there, there is Pandura, East Coast, Damara, there's Collagen, and Better Hope. There's only two on the East Coast right now, but uh, for sure, as the upcoming weeks, I think next week, they're gonna announce some more, where like yes, Pleasant yes, and so will. forth will yeah. get uh, some. Uh, East Bank, you have Diamond and Suzyke. So once again, East Bank will get some more coming up, like temporary stations popping up just to facilitate the influx of people. Region four, so once again, Georgetown we're gonna do. You have the prime time registration office, the Sheriff Street sub office, Metro registration office, and Transfigure sub office. So there's four in the city right now, but there are gonna be a few more once again. It's probably some schools that will be used during elections. Region 5, you have Fort Wellington, Mahaika, Maikoni Registration Office. Region 6, there's New Amsterdam, Kilodam, and Curviton Registration Office. Yes. Region 7, there is Bartica and Camarang. Region 8, there's Madia and Pamamaku, too? Paramakutai. Okay, <laughs> wow, I did not, yeah. Region 9, there is Anai and Latem. And then in Region 10, 10 there's, there's McKenzie. and Wismar. And Wismar. Excellent. Yes, so those are all the permanent offices that are open right now, but there will be more temporary offices uh, popping up. Yeah, so I, I think we do need to let our viewers know that uh, unlike the continuous registration, uh, once you're 14 years and older, this, this claims an objection period. It does period. not apply it to, does you. Not apply to it's you. Only if you'll be 18 by December 31st. Please ensure you go out to one of these offices. The information for this can be found in this week's mirror. So please look out for the newspaper as well. If you don't have it, there's gonna, it's gonna be online as well. Yes.
And, and as you can see on your screen, um, those are some numbers that you can call in so to Freedom House. Yeah, the hotline numbers that will assist you with anything. And then there's a WhatsApp number where you can reach out. And someone will respond to you and get answer you with an answer to your question. Excellent. There's a WhatsApp number. I wonder if you're operating a number, Nalini. <laughs> <laughs> so those are, the by a team. those are the numbers on your screen. If you have any questions, queries about the claims and objections period, or if you have general questions about next year's election, uh, the, the team will be very happy to answer any questions that you may have or any uh, if you would like to also pledge your your help yeah so um, you could call the yes. numbers the hotline numbers let us know you want to help you the whatsapp number is simply for whatsapp you do not call the yes. whatsapp number you can message it and let it know if you want to help and so on or any in questions you have just messages yes so as you said nalini i do want to encourage our viewers um, to take advantage of this claims and objections period this is what we have been fighting for for i would say for maybe possibly uh, nine ten months yeah. uh, for for this period to finally come and for guyanese to have the opportunity to vote at the next election so please take advantage of it if you have uh, kids at home who are who are 17 they're about to be 18 if you have persons who are even 21 i heard one case this week somebody's 20 three and they have never received any form of, uh, of, of identification. So they've never um, registered? No. So, so it's on you to register? Yes, it is on you and we do have to encourage persons though to get out and to take advantage of these so claims and objections. What we want to encourage everyone to do is check your name on the PLE. Yes, the preliminary list. The PLE should be available online in the upcoming days from GCOM. As of now, they've only placed it around at voting centers. So if you know where you usually vote, or yes. have an idea of where it is. If not, you can reach out to the hotlines and they'll be able to tell you where, uh, if you are on the PLE, it's better yes. if you call the hotline numbers versus WhatsApping the WhatsApp number. Um, so please ensure that is done really soon between this claims and objection period, just in case you're not on the list, you can get yourself on the list. Thank you very much, Nalini. And, <laughs> we, and we, do, we do have to also stress the point that um, this period is going to come by very, very quickly. Yes. So if you're watching at home and you're thinking, oh, I have four to something days to I register. Have 43 days. Don't, don't, take, <laughs> don't think that the time will, will just be there forever. Because once the deadline... Well, it's already 42. Yes, once the deadline is there, and you can get registered after. Yeah. So please take advantage of the opportunity early. That's yeah, what I'm trying to tell them to get, get out. If you can go tomorrow, then go tomorrow to ensure that you have this opportunity to vote. Yeah. It's very, very important that, that, you, that you get on the list. And, and one of the reasons why we are encouraging Guyanese um, to get out there is because we want for them to receive the best that Guyana has to offer. Yeah. Right? We have seen over the past few years uh, a lot of false promises. We've seen a lot of incompetence. We've seen what a government who does not have the best interests of the Guyanese people at heart, what can really happen in our country. I would say a country. more of a self-interested government. Yes, too. they're very, very self-interested. And over all the examples that we've been showing over the past few weeks, you know, we have our evidence to, to present that yes, this, this is happening. To present. So in the meantime, we have a lot of false promises being made to the Guyanese people. Um, and this is from the APNU AFC yes. party. Um, we have seen uh, the talk about the 5,000 um, US per household. Yes, yes, so it's, in it's interesting. They, yeah. they talk about this 5,000, uh, they're going to give 5,000 as of 2020. But their yeah. very own Clive Thomas has stated that this, is, this will become feasible. In around 2025, yes. when the oil production sourced about a million to 2.5 million barrel per day, then, so they're promising you something that they know, their own economist, Clive Thomas, is a member of, Yes. I think he's a member of the, the AP, parts of the coalition of the APNU <laughs> or something. But he has been like their go-to for everything economics and so on, and he's in charge of their uh, organization Sara, yes. some, some yes, ridiculous yeah. light salary there too, but he is the one that says 2025 and they're the ones that are telling you 2020, but the whole 1 million to 2.5 million barrels a day, even Exxon says that's probably like a 2030, so they're making promises to you for something a decade away. 
Yeah, so basically... I guess their decade of development is what they want to end yes, out with. Well. <laughs> decade of development. Well, indeed. It's interesting, um, yes. the decade of development. That line was used recently at the UN. Oh, yes. Where <laughs> in, in, in someone's address. Yes, where she said, uh, <laughs> President Danger, I guess. She was just giving um, a hint to the UN yeah. that this decade of development is kind of dangerous. Okay, well, we, we see that uh, maybe she was just admitting uh, what, <laughs> what is inside. What the plan is. Yeah, so anyway, moving on from, from that uh, false promise. Yeah, that there's, that a, there's a few know. more to go through. Yes, um, there, there's still the promise of free education um, from this APNU government. And I have to remind the Guyanese people that in 2015, we received the same promise. It reminds me again, because I'm yes. seeing a lot of young people posting, oh, the EFC is promising free education, oh, the APNU, is, they promised you that in 2015. They did not deliver it in 2015. Why do you think they will deliver in 2020? Yes, and don't think that it's just oil money, it, because... They that, had rice that, money, that, that they, might had be sugar they had a lot of money. Gold money, that might be, that reserves, might be, that please, might be, that might be the going line that, okay, the APNU couldn't do it because, you know, they didn't have enough money, but you're failing to realize that they're spending a billion dollars uh, on dietary, they're spending uh, over a billion dollars they in renting buildings. They had 16 billion in the gold reserve, how That's much correct. did they spend on you? Because they sure spent all of it, almost. Yes, and we do know that in the, during their tenure, they spent in excess, their budgets, accumulated budgets in just four years was, one, was over 1.3 trillion dollars on themselves on the budget themselves, of the running the government the yeah. cost of running the government has significantly ballooned indeed so we, we have this whole thing about free education mm -hmm. and because the party the PPP has also said that during its tenure during the five years it will move to provide free education yeah, as as like one mentioned oil money as the oil money rolls in, the plan is to slowly reduce the cost. Because it can be, you know, we have to... You just go into it. And Nalini, it's the, it's the strategic plan that you have to look at. Because exactly. any party can come and tell you, hey, I'm going to offer you free education. But can they provide you with a roadmap of to show how, they how they're there. going to take the revenue and how they're going to cut costs in order to provide this How they're going to move it from an idea to an end actual reality. That's correct. I think they're just selling dreams right now. Well, a lot of parties seem to be doing that, yeah, but, but a more lot so. Of so this idea of free education, you really have to ask yourself, why is it every time it's election season, um, a particular party, the AP and UAFC, is coming the to PNC. me and telling me that, you know, we're going to offer you free this, we're going to give you this, we're going to give you that. But they, their plans are never concrete. They don't have a strategic plan of how they, they expect yeah. to, to attain these things. So this is what, this is part of the false promises again. They're yeah. coming again with free education. It was in 2015. A matter of fact, we probably didn't hear about the promise throughout their entire tenure. Now you're hearing about it again. So you, you know, one vote. has to, <laughs> one has to wonder why. I guess it's a no confidence fever brought it back up. Yes, I, I also saw in the, um, the Guyana Chronicle, which is, which is a newspaper that you know, it's uh, newspaper. a newspaper. <laughs> uh, we saw that they had reported the the Linden to Maburu Road, and how it ah. was a, it was becoming a possibility now. But we saw on the twenty seventh of September, uh, there was a press release um, from the British High Commission, and I'm gonna just read it here. And it's up on our screen as well, so one's yes. gonna read it. Uh, following reporting in the local media, the British High Commissioner, His Excellency Greg Quinn, today said, and I quote. As part of the UK Caribbean Infrastructure Fund, launched in 2016 over the last year, the UK has supported initial design for the construction of the road between Linden and Mabura and the bridge at Karup Karupakari, which is being implemented by the Caribbean Development Bank, the CDB. No decision has yet been made on the next construction phase of this project. Similarly, the UK funded the design, of the the design phase of the Kingston Ogle Seawall project through UK CIF. No decision has been taken on the next phase of this project either. So, so it was once again a false promise, fake news, lies. Well, what I want to point out though is from this statement, this was on the 27th of September. Yes. But previous to this, on the September 19th, the day after the government was supposed to call to have an election, yeah. There was a joint statement from the United States, United Kingdom, and the European Union. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, but 
what was interesting, I want to read a, few, a part of the statement, is they deeply regretted the surpassing of September 18th, and the state and government was in breach of the Constitution at this point. This situation comes at a great cost to the people of Guyana. The prevailing political uncertainty undermined Guyanese institutions, compromises economic opportunities, and delayed development across all areas, including infrastructure, so like the road, yes. education, health, and social services. This is the line that I found the most interesting. It also hinders our ability to support Guyana's development needs. Okay. We therefore call upon the president to set an election date immediately, which he has done now, but not in full compliance. Anyways, my the point of this is they did say they're going to, in a diplomatic way, cut funding. And then a few days later, you saw him saying, no decision has been made yet on these, these funding matters of this road that they were... Um, planning on making, and the Chronicle had a lovely image up of the road. You could see it on our screen there now yes. where it's saying promise kept, and then at the bottom in tiny writing on the built road, coming soon. Don't know if coming kept soon. and promise soon are uh, coming soon or Well, Well, it's, it's clearly, correlated. It's clearly uh, 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 an attempt to confuse the Guyanese people yeah. and to make us feel as if they have kept the promise but, but for persons to not to say that they're lying, they're going to put in, in fine, as people say in, in, when you're doing contracts and so on, fine print. Yeah. You, you know, Guyanese <laughs> need to read the fine print of everything that this government will tell you. Yeah, because right now they're asking for more time. The new narrative coming out of them is, we need more time. Nothing could have been done in four or five years. Yeah, well, we have seen a lot being undone in well, the four well, or five Well, I would years. say they have now bought themselves more than enough time. Yes, they really and have. And I am happy that Guyanese have now seen what this government is capable of and well, what they are not capable of. Well, what I want to go over actually is the leading up to elections. They had oh, this you lovely have, you have hundred plan. day plan. You have the hundred day plan. Yes, they yeah. have a hundred days. They in the first hundred days, this is what we're gonna get done. They had a hundred. They had twenty one points on this plan. Let's go over each and every single one of these and see okay. where they went. <laughs> okay, so they said they were gonna reduce Barbie's bridge toll. Do you remember the bridge toll being reduced? No, not in hundred days. No. Not in hundred <laughs> days, right? No. So then this was one that I found the most interesting. Significant salary increase for government workers, including teachers in primary school, secondary, tertiary education, security per, uh, personnel, and civil servants on the traditional mm. payroll. Do you remember this happening in the 100 days? Um, I, re I recall somebody receiving uh, significant salary increases. Yeah, one, one, me too. Uh, the one segment <laughs> the of, ministers of only. The ministers, the, the prime minister. And the, and, and the president, they would have received. Um, I guess that's what they meant by government workers. Yes, they, they, they might have meant it that way. But you know, the fine print, we probably didn't see it in the fine print or it, the invisible the, print. The invisible ink was yes. used on well, that well, one? Of course. Well, so, of course. So then what we saw was an immediate implementation of phase reduction of VAT and removal of VAT from food and other essential items. What I remember seeing is VAT being reduced. Yes. But I don't remember if it was in 100 days or not. but. It was added to every single thing. Yes. Education, water, electricity, health services. It went to yes. every single and thing. And the list of items that were VAT exempted, um, it also increased as well. So when we talk about what this government would have provided to the Guyanese people, they might want to say that they reduced VAT by 2%. But if we look at the, the, the goods increased? and services yeah. and what would have been increased and the hardship that it would have brought, you know, it's, it's really, it really cannot be compared. It really cannot be compared. Yeah, it really the two cannot. Yeah. So we can go on to the other one. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So we would have also seen that they would have promised um, liberalization of the telecommunications and IC ICT uh, sector. Um, and all these things that we're going through, it did not happen in the first hundred days. This was their promise. This was the promise that they would have made to the Guyanese people that the first 100 days that we're in office, we're going to get working for you. But it did not happen in the first 100 days. As a matter of fact, some of these things... No, majority of these things has not happened. Indeed. And then what has happened hasn't happened in 100 days. So The 100 day promise was an absolute failure. Indeed. So we're talking about the liberalization of the telecommunications IC yeah. sectors. Um, that, that has not happened as yet. I, I would have seen um, them still making a whole bunch of excuses because 
when they were in opposition, they did not realize the extent that some of these things required, some of the work that was required for some of these things to be completed, and the fact that many times they do not care to implement mm -hmm. many of these things. We see that the focus of, of this government is clearly not on the Guyanese people. It is on everything else, but, a matter of fact, but the Guyanese people. What I found funny was the adoption of a long-term sustainable economic development plan to realize the vast potential of this country. They have shut down more sectors than any other government Indeed. has done in the history of Guyana. We're talking about mining, the rice sector, we're talking sugar, about sugar, you know. Forestry, everything has been crippled Indeed. or devastated or just dead. Indeed. They have a reverse Midas touch here. <laughs> Basically, and we saw also that they would have promised a code of conduct uh, will be established for parliamentarians, ministers, and others holding high positions in government office uh, to abide by including me mechanism for admitting office a violation of the code of conduct. This is so laughable because Very laughable. they have carried the most lawless behavior to parliament. I'm happy that you've said that because it is indeed a reality. Yeah. Um, from ministers making videos in the parliament uh, to <laughs> I know you I know you would have recorded you would have recalled that um, to to ministers. Uh, nearly getting uh, innocent people fired on their jobs. Yeah, or getting into physical altercation with civil civil disobedience, like someone yes. was protesting and you're pelting them out. Oh, yes, yeah, so basically we would have we would have seen all of these things well, completely disregarded. Yeah, so you in have the establishment days. of a national cane worker and cane farmers yes. conference, which never materialized a new thing. The establishment of a national rice farmer and rice millers conference. This did happen but it happened way after the 100 days and it was not in the best interest of farmers. It was really weird where millers, big millers got two votes yeah. and small millers got one vote. How is that democracy? Uh, like some of us have more say than the other person. So I think that what we can see from this, this 100 day promise, mm -hmm. Nalini, what we can take away from it is that Guyanese clearly have to analyze Right, what we need to do, what, what, and also they would have talked about um, significant increases in the old age pension, and we saw that they would have given an increase, a very small increase, but they would have also taken away the subsidies. The tax, the tax, so yes, indeed. W when the old people normally benefit from a subsidy for their electricity and water bill, where the increase, let's say, let, let's put some numbers to it, so yeah. we can kind of like understand that. Let the increase was maybe. $2,000. The subsidy removed was maybe $8,000. Yeah. Where is this old person now going to find an additional $6,000 to, to cater for? They clearly won back their subsidy. I've spoken to quite a few pensioners oh, yes. and they are riled. They're raving for the, the for subsidy The lady I buy custard again. from has wanted back her sub. She wants back her subsidies. She, she definitely is so upset with this government about this. Yeah, so we do have to... Um, we do have to ensure that we we hold our government accountable. We hold this fallen well, government accountable for all the things that they failed to do. Well, the thing is, they're uh, they're calling for more time. They're stating that they want to have a decade of development, and this decade doesn't include this last five years that we've all been struggling. Do we want ten more years of this? Yes, it's clearly an election gimmick once again for them to remain in office. But we have we have seen what their five years or four years have done. Well, it's almost we five because the twenty twenty is when we're supposed to be having yes, new elections. It's Guyanese, just a few months early. The Guyanese people don't want another second of this government. Once March second, twenty twenty is reached, I'm, well, I feel as if the Guyanese people will blow. Well, it's five uh, a years at that relief. point. You know, twenty twenty will be really. five years for them because five we were supposed to yeah. have elections around May of 2020, it's just a few months, they've successfully bought themselves more than a year well, after falling into the The Guyanese people confidence. now have the opportunity to ensure that the time that they would have bought, that they're going to completely end, it's going to end yes. after that period. Guyanese have the opportunity to ensure that that happens. Yeah, that's the thing though, they're, they're, they're false promises, that this, this decade of development that they want to do, mm -hmm. I think we really need to ensure everyone goes out, check the PLE, get yourself vote registered and so on. So we do not allow the coalition to carry on a decade of development. I cannot and imagine a decade more. And we have like not seen much years. development. We have not seen the development there. Yeah, so. because you have a lot of Guyanese calling in with problems. In, in addition to all of this, over the past years, under the coalition government, with their failures in terms of de de developing to Guyanese, 
these have been well documented, but every day Guyanese problems are worsening. You have complaints coming in from areas about the battle for drug shortages. There's some things in the hospital like yes. insulin, pressure tablets, uh, cholesterol tablets. These are things that Guyanese need. And without these things, you don't you can lead to other chronic illnesses. Yes, and you do know that um, I would have spoken with a few medical doctors as well, yeah. and they they they're really trying to do their best for Guyana. You know, you you get your your medical degree, you come mm -hmm. back to this country, you want to serve, but then you are not given the proper equipment. You're not given the leeway. You're not given the drug. The hospital doesn't have the drugs. So it puts you as a, as a professional because we have a lot of medical doctors out there. They might be looking at the program and they're the saying to themselves... The ultrasound machine doesn't work. Yeah. How can they diagnose someone? How can they do their jobs effectively? Exactly. You know, you're a young person. You want to put your, put your best foot forward. But we're seeing now that because of incompetence and the incompetence of this government, we, yeah. have, we have drugs that are in shortage. And then they have this whole idea of sole sourcing drugs where hospitals that used yes. to import their own drugs are now not being allowed to and having to take the government to court yes. to do this. I mean, not everyone uses a private system, so that's yes, a different indeed. story. But the public system doesn't have it and you're telling the private system they can't bring it in. Where are the people supposed to get it from? Yes, indeed. So. Our Guyanese people really need better because, yeah. I, and a matter of fact, I was speaking with um, with a taxi driver, and he said to me that one of the things he wants to see uh, Guyanese really benefit from is is better health care. Yeah. Um, and he said to me also that you know I want to see us to get a hospital where Guyanese can go and they can get everything done there. Why we gotta go to Trinidad and all these places? But I said to him, yeah. so like a specialty hospital, and he said to me, yeah, like a specialty hospital. But I said to him. Do you know that that was something that the previous government wanted to implement? They brought to said, Parliament in the 2011 yeah, session. He said to me, yes, I think I recall something like that. Then I said that that is something that we need to advocate for then. That was one of the projects that the ASC voted on, and I was very disappointed in them for doing that. And yes. it was one of the projects they didn't bring back, because you know they've been bringing back all the yes. PPP projects. Anything yes, successful yes, they is have. done. But this was a PPP project, the specialty hospital yes. was. So how do we move from going good with health to wanting a specialty hospital where we can get the best machines, the best doctors, the best facilities for our Guyanese people to yeah, know in a condition where we can get drugs yes. for our people. Basic so, drugs like a pressure tablet. Oh my gosh. So you just have to look at, you just have yeah. to look and compare the two things, right? So as a Guyanese, you have to look and see the next elections. Am I going to go with a party that is offering me a specialty hospital to a party that can supply me with, with proper drugs? With right? Basic, not, not pro just basic. <laughs> basic. When you don't yes. have, like, some, some health centers I've heard don't even have painkillers. Oh, boy. So that, that has gotten It's that bad. bad. It's, it's that gotten, bad now. It's gotten bad. Well, the blackouts, too, is another thing that's gotten oh bad. Oh, boy. I oh remember boy. we're talking about yes. one girl's telling one if he has an ACD, they'll date him. If oh, he has a please. generator, sorry. Oh, not she's, she's joking about that. She's clearly <laughs> talking about that but uh, the GPL problem is completely ridiculous at this point it's in time completely on the government really. yes and I have yeah. to go back once again <laughs> to, to 2011 <laughs> yeah to talk about Amalie Falls because once again you're presented with an opportunity the government was told that they need to increase the generation capacity of yes. of GPL but as usual, it fell on deaf ears. Well, it went to Parliament, right? And yes. they said no because it was a minority government, so they just said no to everything in opposition. Yeah. And then when they came into government, still didn't do anything for you in terms of providing more. When they knew, they knew at that time yes. that they needed to input. Yes, yes, we did. Because Amalia not only provides uh, reliable, cheap, renewable energy, but it also provides energy widespread, covers about 90% of our uh, our energy needs in and the country with, can cover about 90%. And I think 90%. it was something where after a few years of it being online, the cost of electricity would have gone down too, Yes, right? it would have. So Guyanese would have been paying less, less for electricity. For <laughs> yes, the initiation cost was, was a bit exorbitant because that happens with projects. When yes. you first start a project, you have to pay expenditure and so on. But as you can see, over successive years, you would end up paying back cheaper and cheaper. Your interest rates would eventually go down. Yeah. But more importantly, Guyanese people, consumers, business people, uh, single parents. Would have been competitive. We'd probably get more industries to come in and invest. That's right, as well. So once once we could have provided an environment of, of reliable, cheap energy, uh, the, the opportunities for Guyana would have been endless. So as again, I, again, if you're a Guyanese looking 
and at the next election, you have an opportunity to choose between having blackout three hours a day and having uh, eventually having a uh, pink uh, uh, electricity bill mm -hmm. that is much, much lower, not paying VAT on the electricity <laughs> as well. And not paying VAT on that the is, that is the That is the comparison that you have to make and the choice you have to make. Yeah. This government clearly does not have a plan of how they're about to tackle our, our, energy, our energy needs in this country, which is, which is a super, super pity. So we saw a lot of flooding happening over the past uh, the past few days. Over well, uh, the springtide and so on, right? Yes, so we saw a lot of flooding happening, and I, I was happy to see a lot of the leaders, um, PPP leaders, being in those communities. Yeah, so we have up on the screen now some images of the them. flood. Yes. Yes, so those are some of the images. We saw some of the party leaders going out and reaching, interacting uh, with, with, with the residents and so forth. I saw today a, a presidential candidate. Uh, he was he was on the ground meeting with with a few people. That is uh, Dr. Barry Jack Dion team. He he was also in several of the communities that were affected by the flooding, and we you know we're yet to see uh, any anyone from the from the government. What you know. the thing is with the flooding is that this government said they ended flooding. Yes, they did. They haven't gone out and meet with anyone. But yet they're going out and get funding for the flood affected victims. Do they know what the flood affected victims need? Well, yeah. rice farmers, if salt water hits rice land, to correct that, you have yeah. to basically wash it all off. So they deep trenches and it takes years. Or they can do wow. something called liming, which is super yes. expensive. It's funny, we're talking about rice, and right at the bottom just now was the rice industry. Oh, really? Like yes. <laughs> so we, we, have, we clearly see that this government is not prepared to meet with people. No. And that is something that we would have really seen over the past few years. Well, they recently, after they fell, they had the government outreach where they went with the entourage oh, to meet, boy. but they don't go down on the ground and talk to the average man on yeah. the street. They don't... They, they haven't seen a single picture of them meeting any flood affected no, victim. Because when they have those outreaches, it's it's AC tents like we would have talked about. It's it's a whole team, and you yeah, have they you know, a lot roll of up the meals sleeves and get and down on their team. Yeah, we have to see that. You know, we yeah. have to see the people. Pe see, see you in interview because you're working for the people. You're collecting yeah. a salary. You know, you're doing all these things. So you have to go there. and You have to meet the people. You have to get on the ground. But this is how they are not aware of things like the loss of welfare, where yeah. people are are suffering from the lack of cash grants. The elderly people without the support they've had, yes. the student supports, all these different uh, social programs that were in place that they removed because they assumed it wasn't working or they hadn't affixed the, their thing for the elderly. It was, oh, you know, by removing the subsidies, not a lot of old people were using that subsidy. So we'll take it out. So it's fair to all of them. We'll increase your thing. Yeah. But most of the old people I speak to or spoken to, have said they've yes. missed the subsidies. Yes, indeed. And you know, we have to talk about the $10,000 um, cash grant as well. Because um, I've seen the argument that persons have been saying that, um, you know, parents used to misappropriate the funds, you know, they used to spend it on this, this, this. Oh, people say that. Um, th that's what they've been saying. But oh. personally, um, that's, that's the parents' prerogative. Because as the government, you provide the avenue for the revenue to, to get there to the, to the kids. And some parents have actually said that it has benefited them. So are you going to use the example of one and two parents compared to the thousands um, that it would have benefited that could not afford certain things, yeah. right? So the cash vouchers is one way of assisting, but you still need that extra cash. And it does, it does help a lot, a lot of single parents in particular and parents who, who are strapped for cash during this time. Yeah, because we know that we know of the hardships. We know of the hardships. Yes, indeed, we know of the hardships. I mean, we, we do have the photocopied versions of the textbooks, but yeah. they still aren't cheap. Yeah, so we need to see these welfare um, services, these welfare systems being re-implemented. Well, they will be under the PPP yes, government. Yes, definitely. And hopefully with an increase <laughs> as time progresses. Yes, I'm happy that you're advocating <laughs> for that, Nalini. You have as, to. <laughs> as this time in, in that, well, if, you know, you make a few children. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, that would benefit you before me, I'm hoping. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. Uh, we see another another issue is is um is crime. Yes, yes that um, is a very serious issue. Yeah, also. crime remains a serious issue that is plaguing our country. Yeah, you just saw this is a girl being shot in the head in Essequibo. Yeah, that was in Essequibo Coast. Yeah, um, charity, right? Yes, and it was just, it was completely unfortunate it was and, and so sad. Yes, it was, and we do express our um, our support for that family during yes. this time. And you know, w when we're talking about crime. At this point, you know, we're still seeing the riot squad and a lot of policemen 
uh, basically following um, party groups and party activists as they mm -hmm. go to, to communities and so the forth. The president went on the weekend yeah. to uh, the interior and he went with a full riot squad. It was, yes. We were told so people in the event is that it was in a Ben Ab. It was sealed off by the riot police. Yes, where so no one could enter or exit. Yes, indeed. So we, we do need to see, we need to support our, our, our men and women in yes, uniform. We but do. we do need to see our resources as Guyanese people, our tax dollars need to be better expended yeah, at this we point do, in time. We need an acknowledgement that there is crime in the country. Yes, of course. But we have um, Minister Ramajitan, or should I say, uh, Prime Ministerial candidate Ramajitan. <laughs> Uh, yes, making a lot of statements and so Yeah, forth. he's saying that crime is a figment of the media's imagination and yes. he needs to do something to make it more relevant yes. and we, we did say before on previous programs that persons need to feel as though their issues and their concerns are being heard. So people need to feel safe in their country. This is our, this is our home. This is our home, Guyana. We need to see our, we need to have a government in place that cares for the people, that wants to see us secured, wants to see us safe. That when we leave our jobs and we, and we want to get home, we want to see a government that will put things in place to ensure that this happens. Not that when we are robbed, they will say, oh, um, we don't know that that happened, or that's just something that happens every day. Or that's a figment of my imagination. Yes. I, my watch being taken off my hand was just, an imagination, I don't wear a watch, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we do need to see these, these matters addressed though, and Guyanese do need to get, to get some, some way with, uh, with their concerns being heard yes. by government. Yes, so we've been discussing for a few, and our, uh, our producer is basically telling us that we're running out of time. Uh, so I just want to give a reminder uh, that you can find this program on our Facebook page and also the programs from previous weeks on our Facebook page. It is uh, This Week in 60 Minutes, where you can watch it anytime and anywhere. Also, remember to pick up a copy of the Mirror newspaper. It covers these issues and expansive, a whole bunch of other issues that you can read and you can, uh, you can understand, basically, letters to the editor and a lot of other columns that you can read and understand pertinent current issues yeah. that affect you and your family. And important that this week's Mirror, they'll have stuff on claims and objections, Excellent. the hotline numbers and so on, so definitely get your copy of the Mirror. Yes. Thank you for joining us tonight. What we did cover tonight is the GCOM confusion. Yes. We talked about claims and objections, where we went over extensively what can be done during this period. Please remember to go out, check your name on the PLE, and ensure if you're not registered, you get registered, you need to transfer anything that we've talked about, you get done during this time. You do not have, yes, you do have 42 days, but that time will elapse. Please go tomorrow or within the next week and yes. get it done. early. Yes, we also discussed the fake promises. We went over the government's 100-day plan, which nothing happened within 100 days. And if it did happen, it didn't even happen in a proper way. Like the promise of significant salary increase. I think we all know who got the salary increase versus who didn't. And then we dealt with problems facing Guyanese, and now we've wrapped up. So thank you for joining us within this last hour. Please join us again next week, and have a pleasant evening. Okay. Good night. See you. Good night.